So it's kind of an uh, interesting uh, potential uh, for uh, luxury management. And uh, we, we argue that uh, there's very few, there are few tools, like in a sense similar to institutional support systems, which guide the manager when uh, deciding uh, uh, how to, to move the brand. And um, so our goal is to assist the managers and, of course, uh, researchers uh, uh, with a couple of tools. So um, one is the concept of luxury signaling. Uh, this is something that uh, um, we have been working on for a long time. I wrote my dissertation on it, on competitive market signaling. So we kind of argue that uh, brands emit luxury signals. So if you kind of uh, uh, own a Rolex watch, you may be very successful. And maybe uh, 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 if you have a Rolex watch with diamonds and a gold Rolex watch, you're probably uh, an oil manager from Texas, so moderately sophisticated. Limiting stuff is kind of a most unique thing, and uh, some of the talks earlier tests on that because they kind of emit status, and sometimes you may go to the general public if they think that a Ferrari is a great car, then uh, it may be even more important and more desirable for older men who are insecure to buy a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> then we have a uh, uh, new chance that's a it's a luxury-related uh, tool that allows us to kind of measure your brain waves and find out if you're kind of getting excited, if you see art linked to, to luxury or just regular luxury. So then we measure and then we can see uh, how we can uh, capitalize and then uh, capitalize this luxury um, design. How do you really communicate that it's the most unique product? And uh, we, we argue that a lot of uh, uh, luxury products have kind of a unique thing, like Bottega Veneta is understatement if you want it, or Porsche looks like 911, and things like that. So, uh, lots of opportunities to um, develop uh, lots of tools. Uh, on one hand, that's the first entry, because we think that competition is heating up, and <coughs> we, so called Central Europeans, may long, no longer <coughs> sorry, enjoy that. Uh, luxury monopoly for uh, another couple of decades. So um, I will hand this over to Dana because he's an expert on uh, luxury frameworks and luxury signaling and luxury index. So uh, please. And uh, if you look at, the dis uh, at parts of the luxury uh, definition, actually there is now in the meantime a couple of very precise definitions out there. There's elements like rarity, hedonic, which we heard today, difficulty of acquiring or difficulty of using the product in a proper way, providing unique experiences, very important for it, enhancing the social position, and also being a social marker and differentiator, which we also heard during the day today. The other pitfall in luxury marketing is obviously pricing. And uh, I always hear the easy answer is obviously luxury is expensive, but the question is what is really the right price? I always argue consumers always pay the price and this which is kind of uh, um, reflecting the perceived value of a product. So this means there's only one right pricing and this is kind of really the reflection of the perceived value. But the luxury index in our point of view is one of the most powerful tools actually to uh, run and to manage luxury brand because it's extremely simple. So the approach is that you take basically the cheapest product that you find in the category and you take the price point that you find and then you take the most expensive product in the category and take those price, the price point, and then basically divide the highest price by the lowest price. And what this does is gives a, 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 a multiplier by how much the base value of the category is multiplied by something that the luxury brand or luxury brand um, brings kind of into the play. If we take the best products around the world, and the best product means what we find the most luxurious products, we find quite striking um, high luxury indexes. You can see the highest, the best products um, um, achieve luxury indexes that can be higher than 100,000. So 100,000 multiplier over the base product uh, in a certain category. And uh, in terms of timing, I will just take one reference and uh, give you this as a food for thought. So um, I would argue that many people think that the car industry has a luxury tier. Uh, and if you look at products, you, you mentioned Ferrari, so, so that are sold for several hundred thousand or a million. Um, on a first glance, we can say probably the car industry is already a luxury tier. But if you look at model cars, and if you look at the luxury index of cars, you find a striking example. Because first of all, the, the most expensive model car 
costs four million dollars, and by this is more expensive than the most expensive car. <laughs> but also you find that the luxury index for model cars is four million versus two hundred twenty one for um, cars. So I think this is at least a kind of a thought provoking way to say most likely the car industry does not have really a luxury tier. At least it's not the same that, for example, the model car industry has. And this is there where the luxury index starts to get really interesting because you can now start to benchmark categories and really find out how to manage those products a little bit better.